The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. The Full Melt. Can you, can you give us a liner? Can you tell us, uh, say, hey, this is Tommy Chong and you're listening to The Full Melt Show? To the bull... The Full, the what show? The, the full Melt Show. Like, the like, full Melt Show. Full, full Melt, like Full Melt Wax? Well, the whole mouth show. The, yeah, I'm deaf. I'm, I'm starting to hear th- different things. That's okay. The whole mouth show. No, the full. F- F-U-L-L. The full melt. Oh, the full mouth. The full melt. M-E-L-T. Melt. The full melt. It's like full melt wax. The full. Oh, full melt. M-O-U. Oh. I, I'm sorry. T- give, it, give it to me again. The, the full. full oh, I got that. The, What's the second one? Full. F-U-L-L. Uh-huh. Melt. M-E-L-T. The full melt. Yes. I got that one. Okay. Hey, this is Tommy Chong, and you're listening to the Full Melt Show on... What are you on, man? <laughs> no, t- <laughs> Tommy, I'm on the same thing that you are. Marijuana. <laughs> I think you got a bit there. I think you're, you're right. Are you high? I what are you high. talking about? This is the Full Melt Melt. The Full Melt Show. A marijuana discussion about news, culture, politics, and lifestyle. Fullmelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. Hey, uh, off to a false start today, but welcome to the Whole Mouth Show. <laughs> oh, God, I'll tell you what. Tommy Chong is a, he's a lifesaver. You know, um, it's been an emotional roller coaster, uh, at least for me, uh, these past few days. Up and down, up and down. It's like uh, the top thrill dragster at Cedar Point. You're sitting there finding your seat one minute, and then the next second you're shooting towards the sky, screaming, and then you're crying as you fall back to the ground, and then you come to a full stop. Oh, my God. It's, uh, but uh, that was going on on Friday. Uh, Tommy was late to the show. He was a little bit uh, preoccupied, shall we say. Um, <laughs> but I was sweating it out. I'll tell you, sweating hard. No, I had nothing to go with. And then all of a sudden, Tommy shows up and uh, uh, gave it a full spin around. 180 degrees the other direction. And uh, wow, what a show that was. Um, finest interview, I believe, in the entire Detroit metro market. Um, and now uh, nationally on this program. So uh, thanks to Tommy for, for uh, giving us the whole mouth drop. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, what's funny is that um, uh, I, I'm pretty blind and he's pretty deaf and uh, we're half a Helen Keller each, you know, trying to get us together on the radio is like crazy. Um, but uh, it, it certainly was uh, a fantastic time. He uh, uh, the following day, went out, of course, went out to the hash bash. I went out there ready to do a broadcast and then uh, right to the line to get into the porta potties and uh, couldn't get out of there. Uh, the flu just killing me. I mean, just beaten down sweat, couldn't barely move, uh, pain, 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 la da 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 my vag hurts, oh my God. Um, so I, I had to go. Uh, there was no way I could do a show, and so let me apologize uh, to the guy that gives us the space out there, uh, Michael at Green Planet. Uh, Michael, I had to go. There was nothing I could do. It was uncontrollable, so... But uh, I do feel about 50% better. I think the stuff is kicking in that's making me better. I hope you're well, because that thing is sweeping the country, that one-month flu. Good Lord. Um, the number to call on the program if you want to review the hash bash. If you were out at the hash bash yesterday, uh, please call up and uh, tell us um, what you thought of the hash bash, where you were, what was most notable. Uh, I missed it. Um, all my friends, a whole bunch of people completely missed out on what was going on. Look, look, look the phones are lighting up already. Uh, not sure who's here, but we'll find out. Uh, hello, you're on the Full Mail Show. Hello? Are we there? Uh, it doesn't look like somebody's there. Let's try this line. Hello, you're on the Full Melt Show. Uh-oh. Uh, nobody there either. What, what happened? Let's see, try this line. Hello, you're on the Full Melt Show. Something. Oh, that's why I had the wrong button on. Oh, good Lord. You see what I mean? Emotional roller coaster. Who is this? Are you there? <laughs> what? <laughs> I said, are you there? I'm here. Yes. This is Josie. 
I'm sorry. That's a, that's okay, Josie. I, it was my fault. I, I dumped two callers who wanted to come on the program, and they couldn't hear. I couldn't hear them. Thought they were gone. Um, I thought you were gone too until I figured out I had the wrong button. There, you, that's how it works. Josie, were you out at the hash bash this weekend? Yes, um, we were. We were all at the hash bash this weekend. It's obviously it's the 44th annual hash bash, but there's been a lot of evolution in this year's hash bash. It was two years or two hours long rather than the usual hour. Um, and I'm sure somebody else will go into detail about this, but like. It used to be a thing where you just come in, you smoke, and you get out as quickly as you can be. Um, there was a lot more arrest. It was really hostile. It was more of a civil, dis- civil disobedience than a political um, a political rally. And now it's a big political rally. There's tons of politicians there. We had the mayor of Lansing. Um, Virg Bonero, what a great guy. Dangerous man, according to a hybrid, uh, hybrid Life magazine. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I say, but, I say dangerous man, according to Hybrid Life magazine. Um, I, Mayor is awesome. Like, I'm not, uh, I still honestly don't know what you said, but Mayor Verge is awesome. He was a big proponent for getting legalization passed here citywide in Lansing. Um, he's a big proponent for ending the war on drugs. Um, he was, he was our Democratic nominee for, um, the 2008 election, the 2009 election, something like that. Um, he's really phenomenal. He's the best, one of the best politicians we have in Michigan. Um, did, not only for the cause, but for human rights in general. Did he did he say anything notable? Did you, did you hear something out of his mouth that you're like, wow, that's really cool? <coughs> I don't think she can hear me very well. I can't hear anything that you're saying. I really wish I could. I'm so sorry. That's okay. It might be a studio issue. I'm not quite sure. Eh, sometimes there is a ghost left in the machine. That's a police joke. Uh, listen, Josie, thanks for calling. I know you can't hear me. We'll, we'll move on. Uh, hello, you're on the Full Melt Show. I'm sorry about that earlier. Hello. Hey, who's this? <laughs> hey, this is Cheshire Babies. What are you doing, Steve? How are you doing? Hey, Cheshire. I know you were out there. You were standing right up on the stage at Hash Bash, weren't you? I saw you in the pictures. Oh, yes. I was in quite a few of them. One of my friends called me the Bell of Hash Bash, but I think that there are many, many, many others out there that are more notable than me. But well, I, don't know about, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> the notorious right. Cheshire yeah, Baby. You know, I want to tell you that I'm sorry that your badge was hurting on the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, if you, if you can't laugh at yourself, uh, you just cry. So I laugh. I choose to laugh. <laughs> right on. Right Best on. medicine besides yeah. marijuana. Or maybe they're about equal. I don't know. One makes you do the other, I think. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, I wanted to call in and talk about hash. Okay. Sorry about that. I, I turned the mic off to coughing. I know you can still hear the cough. Sorry about that. Please go ahead. Hawk up along. That's okay. <laughs> it's, it's that leftover flu, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, so um, I wanted to say that John Sinclair, when he busted out his poem with lace on the guitar... Oh, my God. That was one of the most beautiful, most beautiful moments that I've ever had at Hash Bash. It really rocked. John Sinclair was great. All the speakers. You had Rick Thompson. You had the singer. You had Tommy Chong. You had all these great, great speakers. And, you know, I have to say that Monroe Street Fair was packed shoulder to shoulder, but you could see every vendor. You could get to everywhere that you had to go. So, you know, the complaints that I've seen so far, you know, they're one in a million compared to all those that had a great fucking time, right? You know, um, some some years it's a wash because of the weather. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that, of course, it was chilly. It was gray. But you know what? We've had worse cash bashes, have we not? Oh, that's what I'm saying. Some years it's it's bad. I think this was a gr- an awesome turnout. I, I, people had a fabulous time. The turnout was phenomenal. I was standing right up there on the stage when everything was going on, and and as far as the eye could see, you could just see swarms of people and puffs of smoke. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I I've never seen so much open smoking. I mean, even at a cannabis cup. Uh, at the Cannabis Cup in Denver, I've never seen uh, as much smoking openly in public as I have at the Hash Bash. A lot of it. Right, right, right. Well, you know what? Us people, we are we are shining. We are standing, standing up, starting to stand up. I'm sorry. 
we are saying that this is our herb, this is our right, and, and you can't stop us. Uh, Sheshire, is if you're if you're uh, you got a kind of a bad cell connection. Uh, can you? Is there a way you can move towards a window or something where you get a little better connection there? Um, I have no idea. Maybe, maybe. It's just you were does fading out. It was does hard to hear. Work, does this work better? It does. It sounds a lot better. I had headphones on so I could hear you better. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. Please don't be sorry. No, no, no. The, the weather was okay. The weather was not too bad. It was a little nipply, if you will. Um, <laughs> Your brights were on. Is but, that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, but it, it was it was great. What more can you ask for than a bunch of people to come united for one purpose? You can't get the medical community to do that. You can't get the legalization community to do that. But for one damn year, day out of the year, hash bash, or you have hemp fest or whatever out in Seattle, you have people that are coming together for a common right, and that's a human right, and that's all of our rights. I can't really wait to uh, see what it's like in Chicago at the Navy Pier. I, I just doubt there's going to be any smoking there. They just got, uh, they didn't they just pass something in Chicago with the medical marijuana? I'm sorry? Chicago, medical marijuana, uh, the Navy Pier in July. There's a big festival out there. I'd like to compare and contrast between Chicago and Ann Arbor once I get there. It'll be interesting to see the difference. Well, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's in Ann Arbor, whether it's in Chicago, whether it's in any other city. We all need to rise as a collective and say that this is our right, this is what we deserve, and it needs to come together on a medical and legalization level, that we need to be able to join hands. I know that since long before we've been routing, dude, free the weed. Gotta love Richard. Um, and then, uh, Rick, you're, talking about you Rich, have, well, you're talking about Richard Clemens. Richard Clements, yes, I am. Uh, Richard Clements, senior. And, and then you have people on the medical side, like uh, like little Alyssa, eighteen years old, who survived a, a brain cancer tumor since age fourteen off of RSO. Okay, whether you want it recreationally or whether you want it medically, I think it's just it, it's important to vote, get your voice heard, and get active. You know, now that you mentioned uh, Richard Clements, I, I got to get him on the program, uh, just because he's uh, he's. Um, Free the weed! Free! I, I, the first time I met him, uh, he was grabbing the mic after an open event in Lansing, and uh, oh, free the weed! Free the weed! And I was standing right up there. I'm like, oh, there's a favorite. No, no, you can't have the microphone. <laughs> I think he would be funny on the program. Sheshire, if you can hang on through the break, stand by. We'll talk more about the hash bash right here on the Full Melt Show. You got it. You're getting the Full Melt. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. Well, this uh, formula is specifically to grow. Cannabis. That's Ray Kogo for Kogo's Original Cannabis Formula Nutrients. Now, everybody knows that uh, large buds and tight buds come from genetics, and then the amount of light you use. The other part is having the correct nutrients that the plant's going to use. Uh, mine specifically to grow cannabis, so it's going to get everything that it needs. Ray knows what you may not. Those nutrient companies you can get in most grow shops are not cannabis specific. That means they take the stuff out of the bloom that your plant needs in bloom. You can get Kogo's Original Cannabis Formula Nutrients too. It's just two one-gallon jugs that make over 600 gallons of nutrients, all for less than 100 bucks. See the difference for yourself. More trichomes, bigger buds, faster growth. And for less money. Go to C-A-N-N-A-B-I-S formula.com or call Ray Direct at 517-375-8998. That's 517-375-8998. Kogo's Original Cannabis Formula Nutrients. Does your dog or cat suffer with joint disorders, arthritis, anxiety, cancer, chronic pain, or other ailments? Hemp or cannabis-based medicinal products are now legal. Why should your pets go without the same options that we have available? Try Satibis, a daily hemp oil with CBD. Satibis is quality inspected and made in the USA. Easy to use drops are applied directly to your pet's food. For your pet's wellness, try Satibis drops. Ask for Satibis at your local pet store or learn more at PetPain.com. You know, it's not easy out there. 
but it can be easier. And when it comes to medical marijuana in Michigan and chronic pain management, Dr. Bob Townsend, renowned for his patient advocacy and deep understanding of how patients and medical marijuana certifications fit together, makes it his hallmark to educate and provide the best holistic treatment for your condition. His knowledgeable staff makes you feel warm and welcome, and Dr. Bob makes you feel well. With locations across the state in Cadillac and Gaylord, Kalamazoo, Marquette, Mount Pleasant, Muskegon, Saginaw, Traverse City, you can't beat the convenience and feeling you get knowing you have someone on your side that cares denali healthcare is on the web at denali healthcare get answers to your holistic health questions or schedule an appointment now by calling 989-339-4464 chronic pain management and holistic health answers is what they do it's all they do denali healthcare mi.com get your certification and peace of mind now by making an appointment with dr bob townsend at 989-339-4464 In this cold weather, I suffer many aches and pains, which keep me from doing the things I enjoy, like playing the piano, crafting, and spending time with my grandchildren. Toledo Hemp Center, 1419 Sylvania Avenue, has shown me there is an alternative to pharmaceutical drugs. I use CBD, cannabidiol, infused hemp lotions, oral sprays, and topical oils. Thank you, Toledo Hemp Center, for helping me restore and maintain my health with no side effects and no high. Find out more at Toledo Hemp HempCenter.com. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. Seventeen thirty. I, I, I'm like, hey, what's up? Hello. Since you're pretty as soon as you came in the door, I just wanna chill. Boy, I tell you, this is the most monotonous song that's come out on the charts recently that I've ever heard in my entire life. It's like the same thing repeated over and over again. But everybody loves it, so I played it. We're talking about the hash bash. You want to call in and reflect if you went out there in Ann Arbor this weekend uh, to the protest on the Diag or out at the Monroe Street Fair, uh, which is right next door where everybody goes to smoke so they don't get arrested on uh, state land in Michigan. Um, the number to call is 844-420-TALK. It's a toll-free number, 844-420-8255. Uh, back to the phones to Sheshire, baby. Are you there? Sheshire? I am. Yes, I am. So you were trying to, we were talking about, uh, where, where would you leave off at? I, I forgot. Uh, I had three studio cats, Larry, Curly, and Mo were interrupting me during the commercial break. Uh, well, the last thing we were talking about was Free the Weed and Richard before you went oh, to that's, uh, that's commercial. that's right. Oh, I got to get Richard on. He'd be funny. Yes, yes, yes. Give him a great big shout because he is doing so much for uh, us in the city of Detroit. Um, uh, he's a, like I said, but when I first met him, I thought he was a vagrant. I thought he was just a passerby and started going, oh, free the weed. And, and then I figured out who he was, <laughs> like, months later. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you get enough people chanting free the weed throughout the country. Eventually, someone's going to hear us, right? <laughs> I saw him and Marvin Marvin and a couple other uh, guys uh, hanging out um, outside a couple of events. And they're all singing songs, and it's all got free the weed in there. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's, yes. it's a great term. Yes, indeed. Free the weed. <laughs> it's something that we all need to practice. It's all it's all like an ohm. So if you cross your legs, close your eyes, sit in a nice, sitting up sound, you go, free the weed. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's a bit of a chant, and it does uh, say what it means, right? Yeah, it, it does. It does. And you know what? It's important for all of us, old, young, black, white, it doesn't matter what age or what ethnicity or, or where we live. Uh, it, it's an herb that's grown for everybody, and, and everybody benefits from it from some way or another. Here's a bit of controversy. Um, you know, free the weed, like I said, is a slogan that says what it means. It kind of, boy, it's self-explanatory. Uh, the, it is. I have a problem with the one love thing. Everybody runs around going, one love, and it's like a, almost like a Hitler salute. I'm like... Ugh, I feel weird now. And, and, and I don't know what you mean, one love. You only love one thing? What is that? I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it needs well, explanation. Yeah, well, you know, um, I, I, I don't really know what to say to that, honestly. There's so, <laughs> much, <laughs> there's so much confusion that goes on around with this. It's, it's not funny. Um, it, when, when you're standing on, on, on the edge, when you're standing on the fence of medical and legalization, it's, it's like, you know what, which one do you push for? Which one sounds the best? I think free, weed, free the weed sounds the best. It, uh, it certainly, like I said, it's self explain needs no explanation. Um, mm-hmm. the, the one love thing, I'm like, huh? What? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen. Absolutely. I, I want to thank you so much for uh, coming out to Hash Bash, Steve, even though you weren't feeling good. And you, oh, you're, you're a hero for coming out and doing your, your duty, so to call. I so tried. I so tried. Rented a car, did all this stuff, got all these people together to help me, got out there and went, oh, I ju- oh God, where's the latrine? <laughs> Couldn't take that's it. When you push, that's when you push some more of that RSO in you so you don't feel any of it. Oh, no, I, I've not, I don't do the RSO. I don't like the RSO. <laughs> oh. I, it, you know, it's, it's got a chemical taste to it. It's like, ew, I feel like I just licked a varnish bottle. Oh, no, no, no. Wow. I am so sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I, yeah. There's people squirting. I, here, try this. Squirt, squirt a little on your finger, and then I'm like, okay. I, oh, my God, what did you get? And then I look like a dog <laughs> that you put peanut butter in his mouth. <laughs> um, but uh, so that's why I don't do the RSO. Oh. I, you know, I, I really have a rough time with medibles. I don't tolerate them well. It uh, Sometimes you don't, I, I don't take medibles from people because you don't ne- necessarily, right now anyways, know what you're you know, what you're getting. How much is in here? Do I eat the whole brownie? Do I just eat a quarter of it? What do I do? <coughs> well, that's a, that's a very good question, Steve. Um, I think that if you're a beginner, um, if you're a beginner and you're completely new to cannabis, I think what you want to do with a medible is you want to start off lightly. So if you have, like, say, um, a whole cookie to eat, then maybe start with a quarter of that cookie. Give it a good hour, hour and a half, see how you feel. If you're not feeling it, take take it take the other quarter, which will make then a half of the cookie. If you're a seasoned pro <laughs> like me, you know, there's really not a whole lot of medibles that do anything to me. I can tell you that Kirk Reed's kick my ass every single time. Right. Um but for the most part, most medibles don't do anything for me. So if there's I'm one of those people that are like, so I eat the whole brownie, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, you know, I've done that a couple of times and went, oh, my God, what did I do? Oh, I, I'm just going to, oh, can I please sleep this off? What are we going to do now? <laughs> so I, I, I generally don't. Now, I'll make medibles for myself, but, I, you know, I very sparingly ever use the medibles. I prefer, uh, you know, the smoking. It, it's just, to me, uh, works out. I can measure it. I know what to expect. I know what I'm getting. And I don't have pain issues for the, generally for the most part, so I don't need that. Uh, generally, that's for pain and also for uh, people who have other issues like uh, cancer, right? Right, right, right. Well, you know, you can't there, there, you can't make up for rolling a joint. I mean, a joint is so nice, right? A bowl, a bong, they're so nice, but when you turn them into the concentrates, that's where a lot of your people, like the ones that were yelling for help in the in the crowd yesterday at Hash Bash, I think I only seen three times, but still, you have a lot of unseasoned people who are not used to eating medibles, and a lot of people with the, um, if you will, my dick is bigger syndrome, <laughs> so therefore... You know, they have to put all the wax and all the concentrates into the butter to then make these medibles. And then they go out to places like Hash Bash, and they don't tell people exactly how medicated they are. Me, if someone comes up to me and says, this is a highly super medicated cookie, I'm going to eat the whole cookie, and I can guarantee (laughs) you I'm more than likely not going to feel a buzz from it. But there are people out there who are not like that, who are very super sensitive and do not have a tolerance. Just like when you do dabs, okay? you got some people that can do dabs all day and all night. And then you have other people where if they do one of them, they're they're asleep for 24 hours. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. It's, it's, you know, before I ever tried marijuana, even as a a youngster, I I wasn't into it as a child. As a, I didn't do it in high school. I, I, I was offered it. I had plenty of opportunity. Just didn't see a, a reason or a need for it at that time. Are you still there? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. There it was a click there. I thought I might have lost you. Um, so I, I, I researched it. I wanted to know what to anticipate so that I could counter in case something got out of control. I could know what to expect. Um, never would I try anything before doing that research. Uh, it's just due diligence. Um, right. And uh, I, I never did that with the medibles. I, I was like, hey, this is marijuana. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right. Wow. Right, right. Yeah, no, I uh, I researched through watching my mom and my dad, you know. Back in the 70s when I was a little kid, you remember those uh, big tapestries with the dogs playing cards and drinking beer with cigarettes? Right. Out of their mouth? Famous tapestry. 
Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that was going on, and that's that's when I uh, started uh, realizing that not once, not once, uh, was I ever seeing anybody falling out. You know, I wasn't seeing anybody sick and throwing up like they were off the alcohol or whatever else they were doing back in the early eighties. <laughs> and um, you know, as I got older, I started dipping into my mom's stash, and I remember. I remember watching one of those nice shows like uh, American Weed or whatever, and there was this young man, 21, 22 years of age, had some type of uh, prostate or colon cancer. And I remember he was getting his medicine. He had the hardest time trying to explain to his dad that this was the right thing because his dad always knew him to just be a pothead and nothing more. And I remember he was sitting on a curb talking to his dad, and he put his arm around his dad, and he said, Dad, who would have known that uh, herb that I started smoking when I was 14 years old was going to save my life today? And his dad then hugged him and said, I'm proud of you, son. So it's kind of cool. Well, you know, you had some backing. It sounds like you had some parents who were in the know. My parents were always uh, very conservative, um, anti-drug 100%. Um, I remember as a very young youngster, my mother telling me, um, hey, my best friend's kid uh, got involved in drugs, and now he's beating up uh, my friend. And so they had to kick him out. And so, you know, I, I never wanted to become that person, even though, I, you know, that, that would never turn you. you know, if you're going to hit somebody, you're going to hit him. It's not going to be the weed that does it. It's more likely going to be alcohol, never if you ask the me. the weed that does it. Right. Uh, he was weed. predisposed to doing that anyways. But, um, you know, as a kid, not having uh, tr- ever tried something like that, I was like, well, you know, I don't want to be that guy. So I, I stayed away from it. Right. Um, but then my, my first exposure was actually uh, the next door neighbor when I was probably in early in high school. Uh, new next door neighbors, really friendly. Uh, the guy came over one day and he's like, hey, you want to go? We're going to go to a concert. Do you want to go with us? And I'm like, sure. What concert is it? He's like, it's, oh, it's out in the woods. It's a bunch of bands. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm like, sure. I was the oldest kid. So I, I went with the neighbor, and it was just me and him. And so there was a bunch of other friends that he had. It was way out in the woods, a little wooden shack. They had some power out there. I have no idea how they got power out there because we, we were way nice. back there. And uh, the bands were playing. And then, I don't know, about half an hour before, I don't know, somewhere maybe 15, 20 minutes into the playing, I'm like, what is, I, I think that's marijuana. I've never smelled marijuana, but that's got to be it. I'm sure, and then I saw people passing it around, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Um, so I don't think my mother would have appreciated the neighbors <laughs> exposing me to that concert weed. Um, but uh, I didn't try it then either. I was just like, oh, okay, well, wow, that's, I've never seen that before. Um, but then shortly after that, I was like, hey, look, it's um, uh, right after senior year, best friend's over, his dad grew some weed behind a, a big pool so that you couldn't see it from the road. I mean, it was a really tall pool. And the plant had to be at least eight feet tall. Uh, a couple of them, right. several of them. Uh, he was not an expert grower. It was just crappy weed. But um, so uh, my friend, his son, uh, brought like a whole big sack full of it over. I mean, stuffed full. Um, and uh, parents were on vacation. Everybody was gone. I'm in charge of the house. So we sat there at the kitchen table. And for the first time, both smoked marijuana. And I was like, I started giggling. And the giggling didn't necessarily come from the marijuana. It was because now I realized why everybody giggles when they have weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So listen. And that's where the story begins. Exactly. And, and you know, you know, it, it goes on from there. Uh, don't have enough time in this program to go through that. But listen, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about hash bash. Is there anything you wanted to say else before I get uh, on to the other cars? There's a bunch of other calls. Uh, yeah, you know what? I want to thank everybody. I want to thank uh, Charlie Stackenbein from BDTs. I want to uh, thank his staff and everyone that got behind bringing Tommy Chong, Adam Brooke, um, and, and everyone else. I, I want to thank everybody genuinely for making this a very great hash bash. It wasn't out of control. Great speakers. Um, we need to get more uh, Michigan reps behind, uh, behind all this. And uh, you know what? Steve, thanks from the bottom of my heart. Oh, no, thank you, because um, I couldn't do what I'm doing and wouldn't do what I'm doing if it weren't for the, all the rest of these other people. The cops picked on me, and I've never been a criminal. I mean, I've always been a good guy. Um, and the cops were my friends for so long, and then they found out that I was doing this for medicinal purposes. 
and came and started reading. And that's why I ended up starting this show, because I'm, I'm well-educated. I know the rights well. I've been in civics and government for a very long time covering politics and the news. I know how the system works. And I put those cops into check. I said, no, you're not. You're in the wrong place. Uh, you're, you've made some mistakes. I showed them their mistakes. They left with their tail between their legs. And, and eventually, after I sued them, wrote a contract with me that says they will leave me alone in order to get me to settle. Uh, they won't screw with me on this issue anymore, um, yep. at least in, in, in the county, the sheriff. Um, right. uh, they've been in here several times without a warrant. I've seen it. I'm fine. Uh, nothing's ever changed. So anyway, if they can do it to me, point their finger at me, and, and I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm luckily was able to get out of all that crap. But right. that's not how most people would do it. I mean, I let the police in. I would never advise you to let police in. I did this because I was like, look, I'm, I'm not a criminal. Come and check it out. Make, make like bulls. There was 18 cops up in that place. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to, like, diffuse it. I don't, come and check it out. Make sure I'm okay. And then go away. Came back 30 days later, sued him. But you got to do something to fight for the people. And it, it, part of this is just public information, uh, dispelling the myths, dispelling the, the demonizing, and moving forward so that we don't, Waste money on incarcerating people who are just recreating and doing nothing harmful. Yeah, well, if we can, if we can get all the infighting to end finally, all the high school bullshit per se that you will that's in the community, that's in the medical community, the legalization community, any community really, and if we could just stand together hand in hand as brother and sister and get this shit done, all of us could breathe a lot easier and not feel like damn criminals. Uh, uh, yes, exactly. Uh, my, my sentiments exactly. Uh, Sheshire, one love. Smile on your brother. <laughs> Thanks for calling. one 420 talk uh, Who's on the line? Who's this? It's uh, Rick Thompson. How are you, Steve? Rick, uh, I saw you out there when I was trying to park the car at the Hash Bash. <laughs> Uh, that's hey, about all that I one? got to see was you. I saw Rory Gold. He helped me uh, from one of the dispensaries in Ann Arbor, the Arbor Side Dispensary. Uh, it gets all over the country. Um, I'm like, hey, Rory, I'm sick as hell. Can you help me get this tent out of here? He's like, sure, because you had to unload that stuff quick. The cops will come and tow your car. Um, and that's about all I saw. I saw him and then the, the guy from the Green Planet and then the latrine. And I'm like, well, we either drag the microphone to the porta potty so I can do the show or I got to go home. Okay, I'm going home. Yeah, bad, bad sound effects. Uh, sorry about that, Rick. Hang on a second. Hold on through the break with me if you can. I got a question about the sheriff of Saginaw County. It just seemed like an odd thing. Strange things went down. I want to hear about that. And also, um, Tommy Chong with the uh, the mayor of uh, of Hazel Park giving him the key to the city in exchange for a joint. <laughs> Tommy's key to the world. Uh, let's talk about that next on the Full Melt Show. If you or someone you know received a traffic ticket, has been charged with a misdemeanor, drinking and driving, criminal offense, or has had their driver's license taken away, they need an attorney. They need attorney Glenn McCandless. He's helped hundreds of people solve their legal problems over the past 16 years. My law firm is dedicated to providing quality legal services at affordable rates. Call us at 586-755-2900. Again, that's 586-755-2900. Call now. It's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical care cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. 
In this cold weather, I suffer many aches and pains, which keep me from doing the things I enjoy, like playing the piano, crafting, and spending time with my grandchildren. Toledo Hemp Center, 1419 Sylvania Avenue, has shown me there is an alternative to pharmaceutical drugs. I use CBD, cannabidiol, infused hemp lotions, oral sprays, and topical oils. Thank you, Toledo Hemp Center, for helping me restore and maintain my health with no side effects and no high. Find out more at Toledo Hemp Center.com. Does your dog or cat suffer with joint disorders, arthritis, anxiety, cancer, chronic pain, or other ailments? Hemp or cannabis-based medicinal products are now legal. Why should your pets go without the same options that we have available? Try Satibis, a daily hemp oil with CBD. Satibis is quality inspected and made in the USA. Easy to use drops or apply directly to your pet's food. For your pet's wellness, try Satibis Drops. Ask for Satibus at your local pet store or learn more at PetPain.com. Hey, this is Tommy Chong, and you're listening to The Full Milk Show. That you are. And don't you forget it. So it's, a, it's an amazing thing, the Hash Bash. One of the most, oh, by the way, Three Days Grace, this song right here. A brand new album for them. Badass, it just came out on uh, the 31st of the month, last month. Let me be the one to numb you uh, That's painkiller. Anyway, so uh, this thing with Tommy Chong was uh, kind of amazing, this bit about uh, him giving the mayor a joint. I thought, oh, that's pretty brave. Uh, what do you have to say about that, Rick Thompson? Hello, Rick. Are you there? I'm doing great. Listen, I, I, if you don't mind me jumping in, I, I got to tell you, uh, you had comments about free the weed earlier, and, and I loved what Chester Beebe had to say about it. And your and your dialogue was great. But Burge Bernero, uh, Lansing Mayor, who spoke at Hash Bash this weekend, had a little bit of a different take on that issue. He told the crowd, several thousand people, that whenever he heard free the weed, he now understood that that meant free the people and that it was no longer about marijuana, that this was about personal and civil rights. That's exactly... That when, when, when we said free the weed, that that's how he heard it, was free the people. And in fact, he tried to get the crowd involved in the chance between the free the weed, free the people, free the weed, free the people, but our folks just couldn't stop saying free the weed. So it was well <laughs> but it just didn't come off as planned, but... That was a fantastic uh, a twist. Uh, Mr. Bernero, who I've met several times personally, just to, to disclaimer this, Mr. Bernero also said uh, that um, even though we were there before him, he now, um, he now stands with us, and he understands that it is time for marijuana law reform. It is time for marijuana legalization in America. So, you know, Rick Thompson, I... Uh, um... I have to thank you for all that you do. You're an amazing guy. You get around. Um, you're on uh, several boards um, helping assist people uh, in a critical way in making decisions about how things go down, especially uh, the legalized 2016 campaign, uh, which is long overdue. Um, so i got to thank you for that. But as it relates to uh, Free the Weed, i got to say this. that, uh, that Verge Bonero is exactly right because this is ne- when you call it the war on drugs, that is a lie. Uh, Drugs don't go to jail. Drugs don't die. uh, Drugs don't uh, cause havoc. uh, People do. And this is a war on people, not a war on drugs. Uh, Those are the ones suffering. So he's exactly correct. You're you're right about that. Uh, I think one of the things we're seeing is uh, an evolution of thought. It's no longer we have to justify how marijuana helps the human body, Steve. I know that you've probably seen this, too. The, uh, The conversation has advanced to how much money can we make off marijuana, how can we integrate marijuana in our society while still protecting children? Uh, some of those things. We don't have to fight the same battles we did before. It People was very difficult before. Marijuana. Yep, the war on marijuana is a war on people, and I think folks have come to realize that. And now they want to transition away from that battlefield kind of mentality into a peaceful coexistence, and we're just now guiding the way that our country settles into that, whether there's a national policy that settles everybody in at one particular level or whether each individual community or state is allowed to do it on their own. Everybody gets to find a comfort zone. And it's this, this couple of years that I like to call the tween time 
that in between time between society realizing that everything's cool and the laws reflecting that same mentality, this tween time is the tough period where, where people are still trying to figure it out, and, and there'll be a lot of arguments and a lot of anger. But the evolution of the, of the uh, issue is just amazing to see. Almost monthly progress, Steve. Well, uh, I, I, I noticed a couple of things in the news recently with regards to uh, public perception. You, of course, know about Sanjay Gupta and weed. Right, naturally. And uh, Weed 2, which came out the following year, where he doubled down on medical marijuana, saying, uh, I back it 100%. Right. And uh, right. now they're promoting Weed 3. Did you see that? I did not. Weed 3, that'll be interesting. Um, I know there's so much more to tell. I wouldn't be surprised if they continue not to do this. There's no end to stories when it comes to marijuana healing properties. Uh, same, same network. Um, also promoting uh, an original series uh, called... Uh, high profits. Um, it's a it's a brand new thing, uh, very highly produced. I'm going to call it almost like Breaking Bad reality show uh, about marijuana moguls in Colorado uh, s- go running from Denver and saying, "Look, this is overpopulated. It's overcrowded. Um, we're going to do something different and be millionaires. We're going to take more money than our share uh, by going to all the little towns in Colorado who've said no to marijuana because." That's part of their law. You can say, hey, we don't want dispensaries in our little town. Uh, they gave them the, the no ability. And a lot of uh, councils voted no. So these guys are going to little communities, uh, resort towns, and, and, and working hard to change the mind of, of those community members, especially involved in the city councils or the city government. And um, if they can't get them to agree, they're trying to change it out, buy them out. They got enough money that they can back political people to get them in there and put a dispensary in. They anticipate in uh, Breckenridge, Colorado, making $17.3 million the first year, Rick. Huh. How many million dollars? $17.3 million. That's a That's a steep number. It is. Uh, they, in the promo, they're riding around in a car with a giant load of cash, and they're driving past a prison. And they're like, look, uh, look at that prison complex over there. I'll bet you there are hundreds of people in that jail, in that prison right now uh, that are there for doing exactly what we're doing right now. And then they show all the cash. And I'm like, oh, I've never seen that much cash in my life in one place. Yep. Uh, just this week, we saw a Quinnipiac University poll. Quinnipiac does polling in about a dozen states in the United States. They polled uh, Pennsylvania, Florida, and I believe Ohio voters about legalization and medical. And in all three of those states, medical had a, a support of over 80%, and in all three states, legalization was over 50%, anywhere from 52 to 55% in each state. So uh, the, the fact that we have small towns that want to still ban and bar stuff, uh, especially medical, uh, when, when it comes to, to some of the communities here, even in Michigan, that want to try and, and ban medical from their communities. Uh, they really are so behind the times that they just stay. Watching them is almost like watching a really poorly written sitcom. Wouldn't you agree? I, I agree. Uh, some of this stuff is beyond uh, imaginable. Some of the stuff that happens in this community. Yep. I can imagine. And not just in our issue, too. When they're backwards in the way they think about us, they're also backwards when they think about other things like personal freedoms and civil rights. And, and uh, well, of course, it's okay to, to not allow you know gays to walk in the parade on Sunday. What do you think? Naturally, nobody wants to see those people. Hey, I, saw the, I saw the gays uh, getting for the first time in the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York City. Wow. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's just crazy. So I love it when the common man gets a chance to see the lunatic fringe out there, and they recognize it as such. Now then, the other people who are lunatic fringe who are not on TV go, wow, I, I kind of believe that too, and everybody's laughing at that point of view. Maybe I should reevaluate my paradigm on that issue. You know, so when you, when you, you make a public spectacle of people that aren't, aren't uh, thinking in a modern way, you help to influence those other people who also think that way and to come to bring their, their thought processes back into a more alignment. And you, you help to affect social change that way. Um, um, this is one of the positives and negatives about media. that has a great ability to do that, but it can also be used to a bad purpose, like the drug war. Exactly. Uh, Rick Thompson, a publisher of the CompassionChronicles.com and uh, contributor to uh, High Life Magazine, uh, High Times Magazine, and other publications. Thank you for calling the Full Mouth Show. <laughs> Take care. Thanks again. Love your Tommy Chong promo. You have a great one, and thanks for the radio things that you do. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, let's see if we can get Josie back on the line here. Josie, uh, you called earlier. You had a hard time hearing me. Can you hear me better now? I can't hear you at all now. Oh, really? good Lord. It's back to the same thing. I don't, everybody else is hearing me. I don't know why you can't hear me. That's weird. Uh, I could, I could hear you during the break, but I couldn't. I can't hear you at all now. I don't. I'm sorry. That's okay. You wanted to say a couple more things, and I'll move on. Go ahead and say what you wanted to say, and I'll I'll move on. Nothing. You got nothing. I don't think she can hear me. Well, we swung that we swung that bat and tried. I'm sorry, Josie. I know you've been on hold for a long time. We tried again. Uh, I got to move along. Uh, welcome to the Full Melt Show uh, from uh, West Branch, Michigan. Hello. Hello, Steve. How are you today? I'm terrific. Who's calling? This is Carrie Marinchat. Carrie, uh, you were at the Hash Bash this weekend. Yeah, I was down the Hash Bash this weekend. <laughs> so, <laughs> what what did you think? What was notable to you out there? It was the best reason in the world because in '99 or 2000. I promised Renee Wolf at a Tommy Chung rally that I would speak at a rally that she spoke at. That finally happened on my 55th birthday. Wow. And then the, then the next year, I went to her cannabis camp. Then the very next year, my birthday weekend, I went to say goodbye and tell her that we're the train that came back to pull her into the station. Wow. And she was with us at camp or at the bash. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I've seen I, I've seen Renee at many events. Um, she she was always out at Renee is uh, for those who uh, it's Renee Wolf who don't uh, for those of a lot of people um, on this program aren't familiar with Renee. Um, but a lot of them are uh, for the ones who aren't familiar. She was a multiple sclerosis patient, uh, rode around in a cart. Uh, blessed little woman. I mean, she really uh, ha- had a lot to do in the public. And then she eventually, after that cannabis cap event, uh, passed away, uh, unfortunately. But uh, we thank you for helping take care of her. Uh, uh, ter- uh, yeah, uh, we thank you for helping take care of her. Thank you. All right, thanks for calling. Uh, back thank to the you. back to the break. One eight four 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 twenty talk. If you want to talk about the hash bash, wrapping it up now on the full melt show. Stand by. Getting the full melt. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit Canalock.com to learn more about no-smell technology. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810 259 571. People believe lots of things. A recent study showed that one in five thought the sun revolved around the earth. 50% believe they can sense someone staring at the back of their head. Some fake beliefs can make you laugh, but others are dangerous. Like the misconception recently dispelled by the American Medical Association that marijuana has no medicinal value, which caused police departments over the past century to arrest millions. So, will cops change their minds now that medical marijuana is legalized? Just because you confront a misconception with facts, don't think that people will automatically see the light. When the issue is our perceived safety, facts and logic often do not apply. It goes beyond the simple resistance to admitting you are wrong. It has to do with how ideas take root in our brains. When we first hear something, it gets processed in an area deep in our brain called the hippocampus. But as we think about it and remember it, it gets more deeply written into our cerebral cortex. Rewriting those deep beliefs is especially hard. When false beliefs face new information, it turns out the truth doesn't always set people free. 
It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. You know, uh, before Tommy Chong became uh, a movie star, uh, he was a comedian. Uh, he's still a comedian. Uh, one of the funniest guys I've ever met, actually. Uh, for somebody of Tommy's uh, stature, age, um, what a cool individual. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't know what to expect when you meet celebrities or when you uh, talk to them on the phone. Uh, Tommy is exactly like, he's, he is what he is. Uh, you get what you see. Uh, there's no false facade. He's right there with you. Uh, amazing stuff. Um, here's an example of um, what I'm talking about. I don't know if anybody's seen this, but uh, if you have seen on television the crazy Matthew McConaughey commercials for um, uh, the car he's driving, he's like, oh, I was driving a Lincoln long before they paid me to do it. And he's talking about all this ethereal stuff. It's been made fun of on Saturday Night Live and other uh, programs. Here's Tommy Chong's take. I got to play this for you. Let's see if we can get it going here. Uh, there we go. You know, I've been smoking weed since long before anyone paid me to smoke weed. Did you ever realize that you're not in traffic? You are the traffic. You know, some people say you can't go back, but sure you can. You just put the car in reverse. Simple. <laughs> Whoa, I thought this was a 405. The big steer in the road. <laughs> That's a lot of bull. <laughs> Siri, how do you move a bull off the road? Showing results for how to blow your load. Come on, Siri, we don't have time for this. The time is 420. Your appointment with parole officer starts in 10 minutes. Oh, shit. And dude, you smell like a sack of sour diesel. To avoid jail time, use a chunk swipe to remove the smell of weed from your clothing prior to appointment. Okay, directions to parole officer. You have been parked at your destination for 30 minutes. <laughs> well, thanks for being responsible, Siri. <laughs> He can never be Siri, us, can he? See, I can say funny shit, too. Um, I did that Siri thing, that Siri bit along. Like, right when Siri came out on the first medical marijuana radio show I did, uh, did a, a similar uh, bit. Um, oh, boy, I got to stop this before it goes into something else. Um, <laughs> I just saw that for the first time uh, yesterday. I was uh, Googling around some, for some other Tommy material and saw that. Um, uh, it's it's a, obviously a promotion for Tommy Chong Wipes. It's a little package. You rip it open. It's got something that smells nice, and it helps to remove the odor from your clothes so that you don't smell like a bag of sour diesel. Um, but uh, the humor that Tommy brings to the table uh, helps to communicate the message that he's got to give. And he's been giving that message for over 40 years. Really? I mean, I was just uh, looking up uh, 1974. Look at that. There's 40 years of history. And that's after he got in the movies. Uh, he was doing stuff before that that made him famous to get to the movie place. So um, you don't see much of Cheech anymore. Uh, Cheech kind of, I don't know, he's got other stuff going on. Uh, but Tommy's sticking in it. And uh, you see him at events. I'm sure he'll be at Hash Bash out. I'm sorry, uh, got Hash Bash on the mind. Uh, I'm sure he'll be out at the, uh, uh, the High Times Cannabis Cup in Denver. Uh, he shows up frequently at a lot of these events, does signing stuff. Man, he signed a lot of stuff at BDT's in Hazel Park. Uh, that was gangbusters and did a lot more at the hash bash. Wanted to trade him t-shirts. Um, had to go. I don't know if, uh, the guy that I left behind, uh, hanging out at the radio booth, uh, ha you know, I don't even think they gave him a shirt. Uh, I think Tommy went by the booth a couple times looking for me, couldn't find me and went, Oh, I'm out of here. Um, so I, I'm, boy, I'm, I'm sorry. I missed that. Cause I would love to sign shirts and exchange them, wear them around. He agreed to do it, but, uh, I, I, I had to bail. So, the Hash Bash, an amazing event. Um, it's one of those things that takes politics forward. I can tell you the stuff that's happening in Ohio and in other states around the country um, are, are all based on, on very particular needs. And the need is stop warring on your citizens, United States government. Stop telling the lies of Richard Nixon. Stop telling the lies of Harry Anslinger. Stop raping people because you can. 
It's an abuse of power. It's an abuse of authority. It's an abuse of your own citizens. It nearly seems unconstitutional. And I'm waiting for the federal judge in California who's taken under her wing the idea that uh, Schedule One status of marijuana is unconstitutional. That's what they're claiming. It, it probably is. But for the first time, a judge is actually considering this ideal. Um, that's an important step forward. Getting Congress uh, changed around on this. It's slowly happening. There's a lot of negative pressure from people who get money from tobacco groups, from alcohol groups, from pharmaceutical groups, from a big, uh, a big oil. All these people have uh, pulp paper. These people all have uh, invested interests uh, that they have made built around the marijuana war particularly and the drug war in general. Uh, many of the people that uh, are in charge of these. Oh, it's so it's so corrupt. The people that do the uh, the piss testing when you go into uh, you're on probation. Uh, the judges often have uh, control of or 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 investment in those places. Uh, so there's this chain of people who have a vested interest in seeing that their business bottom line goes up by mulling you through the gears of the grind, of the system, the machine that was built to kill Americans. It's more dangerous, this policy, than the drugs they seek to, to control. You can't control what is illegal, and it's a black market. You can't see it. It makes bad people very wealthy, and those wealthy people uh, end up buying guns and conducting their business underground, and that means murder and mayhem, and most of that is in uh, foreign lands, uh, places like Mexico, Colombia, and other, other territories. Uh, this is from U.S. policy. It's not from Mexican drug policy. This is U.S. policy. It was forced on most of the country um, early on in, in this decade, or in uh, the last century, and then um, uh, the U.S. said, hey, if we're going to keep pot out of America, we got to uh, create some treaties with other people because it's, it's everywhere else. And we're the only ones that said it's illegal. Um, we give a lot of foreign aid to a lot of people, a lot of countries, a lot of foreign aid, especially then. It's been trimmed back now. It's probably more in money, but uh, less in spending. Um, but uh, we can we can say, look, we're going to jerk back those dollars if you don't agree to to sign on to this tree, which says you will treat marijuana as a bad, bad thing. And you'll punish those who seek to grow it, seek to possess it, seek to sell it, seek to market it, seek to prop up this industry, because that's the safest way that they can keep those drugs out. It has created a bigger black market and more problems. So that's why these events happen. Uh, that's why this show exists. Uh, that's why we've got you listening. Because there's a lot of people that listen to this show that are already knowing of some of this stuff. Um, my goal is to reach those people who don't. Because unless they get the truth of the matter, unless they understand this from people who aren't, you know, two guys in a bong on a, on a video, um, because that's not a credible message. Uh, they're just goofing around. That's not news. That's a reflection of what people do. Um, this show is about you. It's about how this subject affects you, whether you like it or you don't like it. At least if you become aware of what it is, truthfully, the facts of the matter, then you can marshal forward uh, with truth in hand and act accordingly. Because if you act on lies, what are you doing? I mean, honestly, that's just a crazy ideal. Uh, you got to work with the truth. Otherwise, you are blind to everything. Facts aside, you know, people's perception is their reality. And if they perceive something badly, uh, they're going to shun it away. You, in order to change that perception, we have to reach those who oppose, those who still have reservations, those who still don't have information and knowledge, except for the propaganda of the war on the U.S. citizens. Because it's not a war on drugs, as I said before. It's a war on you. It needs to stop. And I'll underscore this as a last thought, a final thought for the program today. That uh, uh, the, the war is, is, is going to end. It's coming to an end. Um, it's been a slow grind. And the people who predict that this is a slippery slope to other stuff, why not just, um, why not just uh, uh, make heroin legal? I say, why not? In places like Uruguay and other places uh, that had huge uh, numbers of population under the drug war former uh, in their ter territory, um, some of the like 50 percent of the population uh, of Uruguay was hooked on heroin. I have 50 percent. That's a lot of people. 
when they started uh, re- reducing, uh, they start when they made all those drugs legal, um, uh, reduced all, all, all these crimes to nearly nothing, uh, and started spending that money instead of incarceration and punishment, spend it on making these people better, spend it on getting them out of the drug addiction and into work. And I said, look, we'll, we'll, we'll pay for half of your wages. Uh, if you if this company hires you, um, it's the way to go, and that's all I got to say about that. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you to Tommy Chung, and thank you to Gersh Avery who gave us some uh, oil to help my uh, sick dad. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you next time on the Full Melt Show. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.